black and I'm black gold. What's the stress for? It just gets old. When I get home, I want peace and quiet. I just want it silent. I don't want a riot. And when you start talking, it just make me tired. I'd rather dwell in the house with the lion. Bass jumping off of roofs. Now that's exciting. I'd rather deal with that than deal with you. I'd rather live with rats than live with you. I'd rather break my back than deal with you. We want flesh, but you make it too. And from day one, you ain't been true. So how the hell we supposed to make it through? How the hell we supposed to make it through? It's because she black, black. When they're black, black brothers, you cannot deal with black, black. I'm telling you, put black, black behind that. Where she come from, the dirty couch. Go back, learn a lie, black, black. Until you become a shine, black. Welcome back home. That's it, black devil. She ain't nothing but a witch. Black devil, she ain't nothing but a witch. As your black devil, she ain't nothing but a witch. She don't give me no rest, she just give me all the stress. You better keep the preeminence, not a regular resident. You the owner and the leader in the damn home. No need to vote, I'm the president. When I say move, you hesitant. You don't like the way I'm ruling. Here's a damn phone. I call your mama, cause I ain't the one. But you both the same. I ain't a big fan of sports, but I peep the game. The dirty couch is where you from. You should be ashamed. But you fake and wear an ugly mask like your name was Kane. It's a long road just to prove the broad. To find out that she the devil in the Gucci bra. Or she wearing Prada, a whole enchilada. She probably dressed real expensive, but she worth nada. You finding out the hard way that she the weaker vessel. The Lord dealing with the men, we on a different level. Dealing with the men, we on a different level. That's it, black devil, she ain't nothing but a witch. That's it, black devil, she ain't nothing but a witch. That's it, black devil, she ain't nothing but a witch. She don't give me no rest, she just give me all the stress. She's an ostrich, you better be cautious. Boy, I thought you was conscious. Her mouth flipped like an omelet. But you egging her on and sipping the long. That ain't the right creed, no Sylvester Stallone. Cause she blue black. She ain't classy, we call them ashy. She got fleas, you lay with dogs, we call them lassie. Look at her lashes, they look like wings and odd things. Holding her is like holding a scorpion, watch for the sting, yeah I mean. I'm a king and I don't care what you've seen. All them dudes in your world can't stand in my ring like Mayweather. Not a fling or the man of your dreams, I'm way better. Flow cold, but I get way better like Mayweather. I'm talking new levels like Queen Esther. I'ma put your ass away, you red heifer. I need one. That cook clean, one that's submissive and follow schedule. Nah, don't be sorry. Nah, you better be careful. You black devil. Damn, I ain't gonna lie, man. I was fire. I need help, like L. Hey, Shalom Jew, my side Christ bless. What's going on, man? Hey, Shalom Jew, I just listened to that Ashy Black Devil, which I gotta slow it down a bit. Alright, all right, I'ma see what we can do. I'ma see what we can do. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ashy Black, Black, Black. Ashy Black, Black, Black. As you black, 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 from afar said that you've been using baby oil but i guess 
Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 34 and verse 2. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Thou humble shall hear the thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man cried, and his Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth him. O oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. Blessed is him that trusteth in him. The fear of the Lord, O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want of them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come, ye children, and hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many good days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are upon their cry. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, and to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them of, that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. He keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. The evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of the servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. O Heavenly Father, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Father, we come to thee, Father, on that Sabbath day. Father, we ask thee for that mercy and for that strength, Father. We are within your, your ho high holy days, Father, and we ask, Lord, to continue to bless us, Father, as we observe your feast days, Father. We ask, Lord, give mercy unto those that are traveling to and fro in the earth to bring back thy truth, Father, to bring back thy children back unto thee, Lord. We ask you, Lord, because we know through you, for you, and by you, Father. All these things are possible, Father. We ask you, Lord, if we make sure that we, we are fervent in our prayers, Father. We are fervent in our faith, Father. We make sure that we stand boldly for that word, Father. Lord, we ask you all these things in that heavenly name. We ask you, Lord, to bless those that are sick amongst us, Father. Bless the men, women, and children, Father. Those that are traveling uh, overseas, Father, we ask that you give them traveling mercies, Father. Make sure that they make, they make their destination safely, Father. Make sure that the, those that stand against us, Father, never, never uh, to rise again, Father. Break them and send them down to where they're supposed to be, Father, underneath our foot. Father, we ask you, that, we ask you all these things, Lord, in our heavenly name. We pray unto thee, Father. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. Israel, sons of God. Patient. Saints, sons of God, and salute, salute down, have a seat. Most high in Christ, bless. Most high in Christ, bless. 
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sabbath. Everybody good? Yes, All praises. A, we live from Toronto, IUIC Toronto. All praises. All praises. Big up yourself, Toronto. Big up yourself. All praises. We, we're still keeping the feast with the brothers and the sisters here. And um, all praises, Most High. Thank you for the charity. Um, thank you for helping me out with this class. I appreciate you. All right. Let's, let's get started. Let's get started. Let's hope, Lord, Lord's will, let's bring out some edification. Lord's will, we are able to give a drop of information that will help you in your travels in this truth. All right. All right I got with me. Captain Lemuel, shalom brothers, shalom sisters. All praise to the most side being here in Toronto by way of Montreal, by way of Dallas. All praise to the most side. We Happy in this Passover. building. All praises, all praises. All right. <laughs> hey, do me a favor. Get that uh get that title. Bring the title up again. Name of the class is Friendly Fire. Friendly Fire. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying, some some of you Jews may or may not know what that means. If you military mind, if you've ever dealt with the military, those that have not, we're going to edify you. Lord's will. Uh, give me that definition real quick, please. You know what I'm saying? We got top-notch IT here. Top-notch. Rita? Friendly fire. If you come under friendly fire during a battle, you are accidentally shot at by people on your own side rather than by your enemy. So read that one more time. Let that sink in. If you come under friendly fire during a battle, you are accidentally shot at by people on your own side rather than by your enemy. So we are in a spiritual war. We are currently currently in a spiritual war. All right, you can drop the, um, the definition. We are currently in a spiritual war. Uh, many of us, we don't realize how how important it is for our, our, our significant other to be by our side to help us in this travel. And some of you sisters, um, the last couple of days we've been dealing in Toronto and just in Canada in general, where we've had some issues within the families. And it's not, we, we're not having the issues by our enemies. We We expect that. Betrayal does not come from the people that's in front of you. Betrayal comes from the people that's standing behind you. So if, if that makes sense to everybody, y'all good? Yes, Betrayal comes from those standing behind you. The Most High gave us a, um, he gave us a support system to make sure that we have what we needed to fight this war. Uh, he gave us the scriptures. He gave us our brothers. And then he, most of us, those that are married, he gave you a spouse to support you. Those things that you don't have to do. When you're not at home, right? But lo and behold, 99% of the problems that happen in the house are coming from what side of the room? You can point, point, point to that side of the room. You sisters. But, you know what I'm saying, like I said, we're going to go over a couple of scriptures. We're gonna hopefully, hopefully we can bring some edification out in this. All right. Uh, let's start off. Let me get, um, let me, just glitched. Second Corinthians 13 and 5, real quick. This is the book of Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. Come on. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate? Yeah, many times we, we, we bring the scripture out. We say that we're supposed to look in the mirror. The mirror is this Bible. And we're supposed to examine ourselves. We, we are supposed to be able to look and see our shortcomings and our, and our downfalls. And we're supposed to be able to fix those breaches. There's many breaches in our marriages. There's many breaches within ourselves. Many breaches within your family. We have to repair those as we see them. You can't overlook them. You can't run past them. If you don't fix them, they're only going to get worse. Everybody get it? Yes, if you do not fix them, they only will get worse. And that's why there's so many, I think, I would say 60 to 70% of the classes that we do has something to do or pertaining to how to build your marriage, how to build yourself and how to build your marriage, if, if, if that's fair, if that's a fair assessment. But we have to make sure that we, we see we are able to fix. And this is the medicine. The Bible is the medicine. Do not vary from that. 
All right. Um, I pulled up just a couple of things as far as like things that that actually common marriage problems, common marriage problems. I, I meant to send you, but I I, I read it. Uh, disagreements about money are one of the most common marriage problems couples face. Almost a third of adults with partners in the U.S. report money as a source of conflict in their relationships. When partners are extremely stressed about money, they may let may be less patient and more irritable. They may then pick fights with one another with one another and their partner about unrelated things without even realizing it. Do you have that picture I sent you um, with the text message from the man to the woman? Yes, sir. Yeah, send me that one. Do you see this? Do you think that that's not being sent? How many backdoor marriages and all these foolish uh, things we got going on in our marriages? This is real. Even though it's a it's a, a depiction, this is real. Where our people, our wives, are doing these kind of things. We've had several situations here in Canada where we've had to deal with. Damn. Several situations, and we're still dealing. So, Lord's will, we are able to fix these issues. Here, yeah, give me some more of those illustrations, man. Give me, give me some of that good stuff. Lord, help us. <laughs> All right, it says disagreements over financial decisions. One person in a marriage may make more money. One person may spend more money. Give me Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 25 real quick. Lord, help us. This is the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall drink, eat. What ye shall drink. Nor for, sorry, let me start again. Yeah, start over, bro. This hey, is the book. hey, I'll, told you, take your time, bro. Take your time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the body more than meat? And the body more than raiment? So the Most High is telling us that we're not supposed to take no thought in that. Don't stress out over that stuff. The Most High is going to provide for us. A lot of times when we talk about, like I said, the money issues, a lot of the money issues come from um, us stressing about where our next paycheck is going to come from. Where is the money come? Where, how, is the, how are we going to be able to pay our bills? The Most High says he's going to make a way for those that's keeping his commandments. Do you not believe that the Most High is going to make a way for you? Our marriages are based on what we can provide, right? We're supposed to be able to provide for our marriages. We're supposed to be able to provide for our wives, our children, make sure that the house is good. But the sisters are supposed to reciprocate that, right? They're supposed to, once we have the house, be able to maintain the house, right? So when we, when we say that we, 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 don't, we don't take no thought in it, we are supposed to take some care in it, though. Don't stress about it. Don't be sorrowful over it. But we are supposed to maintain it. Y'all good? A lot of times what we have is this, this, this lack of understanding of what we want and what we need. There's, there's a difference between the two. And oftentimes in marriages, we have that conflict of what you want over what you need. The Most High is going to provide what you need. You understand? He's going to provide what you need. What you want may not come to you. You might not deserve it. You want it but don't deserve it yeah, or you haven't worked for it. But at the end of the day, the Most High is going to provide for you. Read. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? So you see the animals, they don't starve. The Most High provides for them. He gives them what they need. They don't have any wants. They have needs, and the Most High provides for them. We have to make sure that we have that same mindset. The Most High is going to give us what we need. Do not put your, all your cares into what you can get or what you can uh, squeeze out of this world. That's, 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 that's carnal of you. Yeah, Cap, yeah. And, and, and that's the point. You, you just hit it on the head because the arguments, the conflict, 
comes in when we confuse the chief things in life. What's being described right here, Matthew 25, 26, are the chief things in life. Right, the basics. The basics for us to be able to maintain in this world. All this going to burn up. We got to be able to maintain. But when we prioritize our wants over our needs, then we start to apply that pressure right. on our husband. On, uh, we, you start to apply that pressure on your husbands, then it's it's up from there. A lot of times, and it's and this the crazy thing about what you what you just said in the chief things of life, the chief things of life are are so basic that the you often look over it, you oftentimes look over it, and you make light of it. The Most High, when He provides that job where you have just enough to feed your family, where you have enough to do these things that to, to maintain your life, we go above and beyond, and then we forget this. We go so far above and beyond where your 40 hours now turn into 60 hours. Your 60 hours now turn into 80 hours, and you forget this. You forget the thing that actually brought you to the most high. And while we're in this truth, we're supposed to maintain a balance. We're supposed to be able to maintain this balance. Bishop did a class um, years ago, the, the, the 24 hours in a day, and giving eight hours to your job, giving eight hours to sleep, and then giving eight hours to the most high God. A lot of times we forget that last eight hours. We have to maintain that eight hours. Yeah. Even even though some the sacrifices that you might have to make, you might not be able to get it all in in one day. But days that you do have, you should be able to do that. Right? All right, from there, give me Hebrews 13 and 4. Let's balance the budget. Book of Hebrews. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 4. Come on. Marriage is honorable in all. Come on. And the bed undefiled. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Read. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your conversation, because we read 13 and 4, and we normally stop right there. <laughs> Read 13 and 5 again. Let your conversation be without covetousness. This is within your marriage. This is within your marriage. We're not supposed to have that covetous spirit. You want more than you need. And oftentimes it leads to problems. It leads to stress. It leads to discord in your own home. Half the marriages are destroyed but matter of fact, it said more than half are destroyed over money issues. Money issues. Money, who, whose money is it? If it's Caesar's money, give it back to Caesar. Why has that become your burden? Why is that now where it takes your, it, it pulls your house apart over money? You know, Esau, they devalue money everywhere they go. They devalue uh, countries. Matter of fact, Canada's money. Canada's currency is less than U.S. money. Based on what? Somebody's word? Do you not have natural resources here? They take your resources and tell you, well, your resources, I, I give you about half of that. I, I pay you half of what you, what you think it should be. The resources over in Africa, they devalue those things. And in, in your marriage, because you don't understand how to maintain and just be content with what you have, you become covetous even within your own marriage, and you allow that to tear you apart. The Most High says the, what he created, let nothing tear it apart. Let nothing tear you asunder. Read on. And be content with such things as ye have. Read. For he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. You're supposed to find happiness within that marriage. The same marriage that the Most High has with us, you're also supposed to be able to replicate and you both are supposed to mirror that even in your own home. The same care that he has for us, we're also supposed to have for each other. And oftentimes we don't have that because we were told we were turned away from the most high God. We were told how to be. Most of these marriages, if you look back at how marriages used to be, we were the most married people. We had the most stable homes. Our homes were stable. Now you are the most divorced. You are the most torn apart, the most single mothers, the most broken homes. You understand what our enemy has done to us? We understand what our enemy is doing. But the people standing behind us supposed to be supporting us, stabbing us in the back. 
Damn. Shooting you in your back. Friendly fire. Betrayal. And it's subtle. It's subtle. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a while for it to start manifesting. Bishop Yawasap said, boiling the frog. When you put the frog in the hot water, it does not realize that you are cooking it. It thinks it's hot water. It's, war- it's a warm bath until it's dead. We have to see that. We have to be able to spiritualize, see that we have problems within our own marriages, and we're supposed to, as men, fix it. It's not 50-50. It's not 60-40. The Most High called you to be the hedge. You're supposed to maintain that marriage, and the yeah. sisters are supposed to fall in line. Some of you sisters, y'all want this to be your way or no way. Guess what? Some of you going to find out you're going to be on the highway. Lord, help us. This, what are the signs of an unhappy marriage? Now, these are like, you, you can Google search it. It's, it's not hard to find. You, are hardly, you hardly communicate anymore. There are little to no intimacy you would rather spend time with your friends than to be home with your partner. Everything you do irritates them. They are emotionally withdrawn. Both of you have different values, beliefs, or goals. There is criticism, contempt, this f- defensiveness, and stonewalling. Look up stonewalling, please. It's not a, um, a natural word for the mind of a Negro. Oh, and while y'all pulling it up, Cap, that 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 thirteen to five, that's such medicine. That's medicine. We we often don't read it enough. We we don't read it enough because it says, "Let your conversation be without covetousness." So as y'all are discussing the finances, the, we're just dealing with finances for for right now. As y'all are discussing the finances, you're discussing the money. That goes back to what you read early on 13 and 5 about examining yourself you got to examine your conversation examine your speech examine your your wants versus your needs hell go as far as sisters write it write a list brothers write a list okay this is what we arguing about we arguing about the house the car and then you need to okay this is this is a need right here this is we got to prioritize this 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 is a want Mm. you got to be able to have that defining line that way you're not teetering the line of covetousness and then the arguments just ensue day over day over day. Y'all need to get on the same page. Y'all got the definition? Cause I'm oh yeah, go ahead, throw it up. Read. Stonewall. Delay or block a request, process, or person. By refusing to answer questions or by giving evasive replies. Especially in politics. The politics is your marriage. The politics is your marriage. When when you ask a question or you're dealing in your house or you're asking questions about your children or what's the state of the house and you don't get a direct answer or it's a roundabout answer, if you tolerate that, it's only a matter of time. It's it's only going to get worse. It's progressively going to get worse. The The things that you'll tolerate will be the, well, the things that you accept will be the things that was going to wind up breaking you. Your peace should never be negotiable. You understand that? I'm talking to you men. You understand that? Yes, Some of y'all is like, you looking over there, what's she going to say once the class is over? Damn. Don't be scared. We got you. I, I, know, I know some guys. I know some guys. I can, I can, I, I know some guys. Uh, matter of fact, jump down to 17. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 17. Read. Obey them that have the rule over you. Do what? That have the rule over you. No, what's the first word? Obey. Obey. I know, I know. This is looking at me like, what, what, what you talking about? What would that mean? Yeah, give me the definition of obey. Let's 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 get technical. If we're gonna do it, let's do it. Let's do it. And read that again. Somebody looking for it. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Read. 
and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. What does that mean? What does it mean that they, they watch over your souls? Because oftentimes we read it and we associate it only with leadership. But it's your own home. It's your home that you have to watch over. You're the Lord of your house. You understand that? As some of you, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully, Lord's will, by the end of the class, you, 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 you'll pick up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. We're going to lift some weights. Spiritual. Read. As they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Your, your home shouldn't be broken. Your peace shouldn't be negotiable. You understand? You, you are the master and the lord of your house. You have to rule over your house. Your children and your wife should be in subjection to you. That's right. You understand? Okay. Because some of you men, and, 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 and it's not, to, I'm not talking about just, I'm not talking about just here. I'm talking about all of us. We have to grab the reins and take back over. Enough with Esau running your house. Enough with them YouTube, TikTok, and all the other social media platforms telling your wife how your house should be ran. You run your damn house. I don't know. I'm not convinced. Give me the definition. Damn. I'm, uh, we going to get there. We going to get there. I'm, I'm going to work with you. Read that. Obey. Comply with the command, direction, or request of a person or a law. Submit to the authority of. You submit to the authority of. Who gave the man the authority over the woman? Who? Who? Okay, okay. So don't be scared. I need you to believe it. You understand? I need you to believe that. The Most High is the one that gave you the authority over your house. Not Esau. Not your, your mama, not your daddy. Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ gave you that authority. That's Use right. it. Use it. Some of you men, you allow your wives to run your house, and it leaks over into the congregation. That is a shame to you. That is a shame to you. They are supposed to obey you. But until you grab... Your, your man parts and stand up for yourself, you are going to be under their authority. Get there is no balls, 50. Bro, 50. You. <laughs> that was the longest uh, sound bite ever. But if you do not believe that you are in authority and you have to rule over your house, you are not the Lord of your house. You understand? You are partners. You are roommates. You are roommates in your own damn house. Yeah, Cass. That's, yeah, that's that's one of the uh, that's one of the terms that they use when you look at these black listen to these black podcasts and these YouTubers, and a lot of these sisters now. The term that they use is I want. They don't say I want a husband. They say I want a partner. Huh? Yeah. That's what that's what they say in the world. Sisters in the truth are supposed to be saying I want a lord, my lord, my husband, my king, my god. That's what they should be saying. But hey. in the world, those are the terms that they use. You know, it's crazy, Cap. It's funny you say that because she'll say, yeah, she'll, she'll be on the phone with, with her friends. Hey, I got to get off the phone. My Lord is home. Hey, Tyrone, you know what I need you to do? Like, what, what just happened? Damn. Where was the trend? How did that switch just, up? The like, switch how up. did you hit me with the one, two like that? Mm -hmm. Babe. Babe. Or, 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 or whatever you, the, the terms, you don't get. The, it's not just the word, it's the authority that comes with it. It's the, it's the title and it's the action. Some of you men, you accept so little that they give you even less. Bruh. You understand that? If you don't, I, I promise you, before we finish, it'll sink in. I promise you. Exodus 21 and 10. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 21, and verse 10. Read. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage, shall he not diminish? I don't want that. Give me, I meant to say, uh, Sirach 26. I'm sorry. 
some of y'all might use it. You about to go to go to all the way off, go the other way. Sirach twenty six, verse one. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 26 and <laughs> they verse about one. They're to say, what in the hell? I'm, actually, I'm expecting a text message. Sirach 26 and one, read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse one. Read. read Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. Come on. For the, his number of days shall be doubled. Read that, read that last part again. For the number of his days shall be doubled. Double. Sisters, do you not understand the less stress you put on your husband that his his days on this earth can be doubled? You cut a man's life in half. Half. Just from stress. Just from the stress alone, you cut a man's life in half. We have to already, you already have to go out and you fight a war. You got you got Esau on your ass. You got all these different nations stressing you out, and then you come home and you have to put on another pair of combat boots. You have to put on the combat slippers. Put your helmet on. Put your bulletproof vest on. The next eight hours at home, you're still at war. Damn. You have to. <laughs> It's funny now because we're, we're laughing, reading it in, hind, in, in, in hindsight, but when you go home, it ain't funny. When you got a headache every day, that's not funny. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, kidney shot, you got two heart stents. It's all bad for you. Your health is bad. Your, your spiritual health, physical health, and your mental health. We take, we take that lightly, but it's not light. Read that again. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife. Read. For the number of his days shall be double. Read. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband. It, no, it tears him down. Rejoiceth her husband. No, she stresses him the hell out. Rejoiceth her husband. Read. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. It, it, no, no, no. You read that way too fast, bro. <laughs> I need you to read that part again. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband. Yeah, we just cut the speed in half. Read. And he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. In peace. In peace. How hard is it to be at peace with the person that you're supposed to be spending the rest of your life with? How hard is that? Why do you not seek peace? Why do we fight for war? Why do we look for a battle when it, it shouldn't be a battle? It's times of peace when you get home. Read. A good wife. A what kind of wife? A good wife. Read. Is a good portion. A good wife is a good portion. Meaning, meaning, a bad wife is a terrible portion. Read on. Which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. If we are keeping God's commandments and we are keeping them together, you should be a good portion. You should be, you should strive to be a good wife. You have to battle yourselves, sister. No, we know we are mostly that nine times out of ten, the battle is not with your Lord, it's with you. Your mind is conflict. You have to subdue your thoughts. As a matter of fact, get that. Hold that and get subdue your thoughts. You have to bring your crazy self to subjection. Some of you are should be medicated. <laughs> be honest with you, damn. Because you, and, and it's not it's not all your fault. I I I'll, I'll attribute it to to Esau's programming that you've had since you was a child. You understand? Since you was a child, you were shown an image and you were giving a platform and you were pushed in a direction away from your husband, away from the person, even from your father. Your father is the first man in your life and you rebel against him or he wasn't in your home and you don't know what a real man looks like. So you have this imaginary 
uh, vision of what a man is in your head because it's planted there. It's planted there by TV, yeah, social was, media. Yeah, I was, yeah, that's what I was just about to say. It's an evil seed that's planted in your head. Now you have an evil tree in your mind. And that was given to you from a child. These young daughters of Sarah now are looking to you to be a righteous example of what a, a, a wife and a, and a mother is supposed to be. And how? what kind of example are some of you women over here? Some of you women are, 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 are terrible examples of what a mother should be. I'm talking about sisters with fringes. I'm talking about sisters that know that they're, they're, they're the children of Israel. I'm not talking about the wicked sister, the damn Cardi B's and all. They don't know no better. Or they choose not to do better. Whatever it is, they'll pay for it in the end. No, I'm talking about sisters that's repented, eat, uh, that, that, that celebrate the Passover, eat, uh, break bread every Sabbath, and say, Shalom! For full 11 on the Passover. We have to refrain our minds and our thoughts from this evil that our enemy has given us. Fight, sisters. Read. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, and verse 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. Whose understanding? Your own understanding. You, you turn the, the, the TV in your head off. Turn it off. Some of you, Cardi B and, and all, Sukiyana and all kind of filth in your mind. Turn it off. Fight that, that temptation of trying to be a bad B and a boss. Because you're not. The Most High did not design you to be that. But it's okay. We're going to get it right. We're going to get it right. Read. And reform your hearts. Reform your wicked minds. Come back to the Most High God. Fix your ways, sisters. Fix your ways. Wash yourself. Make yourself clean. Is that, that's ATL. I see you. I see you out there. Go back to where you was at. I forgot it was a delay. I saw it before they saw it. This is that. the book. I know uh, that sister right there. <laughs> Read that. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 3. Come on. A good wife is a good portion. Read. Which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Read. Whether a man be rich or poor, if he have a good heart toward the Lord. So that whole thing I read about the money, the, 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 mar the marital issues begin with money. Rich or poor. Rich or poor. Stop putting your value in what Esau values us at. Because Esau only looks at you as a slave. Whether you're a rich slave or a poor slave, you're still a slave. We have to conform our minds, even in this captivity. Remember, we're rehearsing the righteous acts. That means that you have to rehearse the righteous acts. You understand? Rich or poor. Read. If he have a good heart toward the Lord. Read. He shall at all times rejoice with a cheerful countenance. He shall be rejoiced with a cheerful countenance. Because we know, we know that our reward is coming. We know that our reward is on the way. When the Most High cracks that sky and all the people that have done this evil to us have to pay Oh, man, it's going to be a glorious day. Oh, man. All praise in the Most High and His Son, Jesus Christ. That's got goosebumps. Read that. There be three things that mine heart feareth. Read. And for the fourth I was sore afraid. Read it. The slander of a city. Uh-huh. The gathering of, together of an unruly multitude. Read. And a false accusation. Read. All these are worse than death. But? But... A grief of heart and sorrow is a woman that is jealous over another woman. Read. And a scourge of the tongue, which communicateth with all. Read. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. I said it's a yoke. It's a bond. It's a bondage. It's like being put in slavery all over again. 
You go home and you become a slave. You are a, tree, a three-time loser. Because when you on, get up in the morning, man. Esau going to enslave you again. You can't win. What is that, what is that, that, that show? Come on, everybody hate Chris. Yeah. Everybody hates you when you get home. Find peace. Seek peace. Sisters, is it, is it so hard to want to be at peace? Is it so hard? Did your Lord work, work 12 hours, come home to a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and, and a side of ramen noodles? Did, does it, did, we, did we really have to live that life? Did the high blood pressure come from the food that we get served? Is it really, is it really that necessary? Can, can we not have peace? Did the kids screaming in the background when you come home? You had all day to get that screaming out, all day. Get the screaming out early. When your husband come home, can he not have some peace? We, it's, it's not hard. It's not hard. We had that. We had that as a people. Our enemy took that away from us, and now we are fighting to get it back. And we're going to get it back with you, without you. We are going to find peace. Read on. He that hath hold of her is as though he held a scorpion. What? He did what? He that hath hold of her is as though he held a scorpion. I don't know if you've ever seen. what. It, can, can you give me an image of a scorpion? A, a big scorpion. I know no baby one either. You got to get, because a woman would average size about 5'6", about 130 pounds. Scorpion. Read that. Pull it up. Ish. Yeah, it's five six, about a hundred thirty pound scorpion waiting for you when you get home. Damn. At the door. Go back. Read. A drunken woman, and a gather abroad. Causes great anger. Causes what? Great anger. That, that 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 mental state that your husband is in. It's it's anger. It's sometimes it's misdirected. They they'll lash at other things because they don't know how to control their tempers. They don't know how to control their emotion. Know why? Because they were raised by single mothers. That didn't and their father wasn't there to show them how to direct their anger wasn't there to show them how to walk away from a situation. Sometimes you just walk away and leave you to your thoughts. In the middle of a conversation, just walk away. And we'll come back to it later. When, you are, when you're at peace and I'm at peace, we can make peace. But we're not going to have a war in the house. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. If you, if you accept it, you earned it. You understand? Some say, did, did that hit home for some of y'all? All praises. Read. And she will not cover her own shame. She will not cover her own shame. Uh, where you at? Um, I'm at verse 9 now. Verse 9 and read. No, I don't want 10. Jump from there. Give me Amos 3 and 3. Yes, sir. Even though we can't go, we can go further because it's the, the daughters are being raised by the mother. And they're being they're, they're bad examples. Wouldn't be hard to do it. Read. This is the book of Amos, chapter 3, and verse 3. Come on. Can two walk together except they be agreed? It's two spirits, right? But we're supposed to be one flesh. You understand? We're supposed to be able to walk together. We're supposed to be right. Look at it. Look at the righteous pictures. Somebody come look at this. We have examples of how we're supposed to be. All you have to do is follow it. You don't have to recreate the wheel, sister. You don't have to try to redo the in, invent life, invent fire. We have those examples. And some of you sisters don't want that. Or you have your own version of it. What, more, what, what is more peaceful than to see the, the example that we have in front of us, that we have the, the righteous marriages, 
We have leadership. We have brothers and sisters getting married all the time in righteousness. We had an incident with a sister that recently, recently, that a, a brother beguiled her on back on a back pay or a back channel on uploads God's laws. Uploads God's laws. Damn. You are on a platform of righteousness. And you're backdooring somebody or backpaging and direct messages on somebody that, that with that you're supposed to be listening to the commandments of God. For God's sake, do something. Come on now, dog. You're on a you're on a platform you where you're supposed to be learning, and you're on the damn back channel talking evil with each other. What kind of crazy stuff are we talking about here? And it's and that's not just one. That's just an example of what we go through. That's just one example. How many backdoor marriages? It's a backdoor marriage going on right now as we speak on the Sabbath. Damn. As we speak, somebody's in the midst of wickedness with their fringes over their head. Right. <laughs> and and that's, that's after multiple warnings. Don't DM. Stop DMing. Don't be in the DMs. And y'all run right past. All the warning signs, all the, y'all run right past that stuff. No, they don't run. They don't run. It's a sprint, and they get in the car and take off and floor it. Bruh. You are so far away from righteousness. You are so far away from it. Give me that. Deuteronomy 6 and 25. Give me that. Because maybe some of you don't know what righteousness is. Maybe your Bible doesn't have it. Maybe yours is a typo. It's not there. But we're going to read it. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 25. Come on. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. No, no, no. It says just read them. To do all these commandments. Read. Before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. We have a commandment to keep God's laws. It's, It's a covenant that we have with our Lord. You have to have a covenant. When you, make, when you are married, that's a covenant. That's an agreement that the most high ordained. The most high ordained that. And some of you don't take it seriously. You don't realize that you will pay the price for that thing. There's a price to be paid for you. You understand that? You are going to have to answer for all the evil, wicked stuff that you do here. Your actions are being recorded against you, not for you. Your actions, your actions outweigh your mouth. You talk a good game where you're righteous in the sight of men, but the most high knows your wicked heart. Stop the cap. You understand that? The most high is watching you. Jesus is watching you, sister. Proverbs 15. No, did we go uh, go back? Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Hit me. Two are better than one. Come on. Because they have a good reward for their labor. They have a what? A good reward for their labor. We just read that it's better for two than to be one. No, I'm sorry. Two for two to walk together as one. For two to walk together as one. Two spirits becoming one. Read it again. Two are better than one. Read. Because they have a good reward for their labor. So did we not read that in Hebrews 13 and 4? We have a reward for for our marriages. It's called peace. (laughs) That little bit of peace that we have is because we, we are following the laws of the Most High God. We are, have a, a righteous marriage because the Most High said he put that, that support system for you. Paul said if he, if he could, he wished that everybody could do what he's doing. Everybody could walk single. Everybody could do this mission by, him, by themselves. But he says if you can't, get married. And it's better for you to marry than it is for you to burn. Right? Some of you don't believe that. Some of you right now are, are back channeling and doing all kind of foolishness, even on the Sabbath day. 
know I can you know I'm confident in saying that because it's happened before. It's happened multiple times, on multiple occasions, in multiple states, in multiple countries. And you always get found out. It always comes to the light. Oh, man. And then you find your 11 behind out the door. No, no, no. Then they shoot the video. Why, oh, why, yeah. I, left, why I left IUIC. Mm-hmm. Damn. Why I left IUIC. You, no, nobody ever talks about what they did to be put out of IUIC. Or we us taking a break from you. Just taking a break. Vacation. Read what you got. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. So even when you come home broken, battered, been getting kicked in the head all day, all day, it's something, it's someone there to help you pick yourself back up, give you a little bit of relief. It's a little bit of relief, not much. Not asking you to reinvent the wheel. Just be a support system. Read. But woe to him Uh that that Uh is alone. It is is woe to him. Woe to him that's alone. Read. When he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. That's why it talks about us having that support system. If you're strong enough to where you can battle this alone, battle it alone. Some of you men, if if you 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 might be too far gone to 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 get a spouse. Some some of y'all are crazy as hell. And you'd have to find somebody just as crazy as you. It, it might be a long search. But to those that are married, to those that have made that covenant, who have made that bond with the sister, the sisters are supposed to re- they're, they're supposed to realize that, and they're supposed to fight with you. You understand? Read. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one wa- be warm alone? Mm-hmm. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So it, the, the whole support system, the more, you, the more support you have, the easier it is for you to walk through this, 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 this wicked kingdom. Your kids have to be behind you. What good is it for your, for your wife to be behind you and you got these wicked kids, right? Who's, who's putting them in check? Is the man supposed to come home and do that too? Hmm? No, sir. Boy, y'all on it, bro. I ain't even know y'all had that sound bite. Y'all on it. Hey, listen, listen. Tor- listen. Canada? I know I, I can't say all Canada. Toronto? Y'all all right. That's right. Y'all all right. You all right with me. Give me uh Proverbs 15 and 1. Y'all all right with me. I don't care what they say. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 15 and verse 1. Come on. A soft answer turneth away wrath. How hard is that? What, what kind of answer? A soft answer. No, no, nigga, get out of my face. A soft answer. No, I want to I wanna buck up. I want to fight you. A soft answer. Read. Turneth away wrath. Come on. But grievous words stir up anger. So when in your, give me, give me some of those pictures with the, with the, yeah, those pictures right there. Look at that. Somebody come look at this. Do you think that there's peace there? Oh, I forgot there's a delay. Hold on. This is or is hey, there you go. It's a delay between the okay. We're looking at everyday life in a black and Latino family. That's what it is. That's what it is it's rare that you don't see that. And it should be the other way around. It should be the other way around. That is war. That is spiritual warfare. That is mental warfare. We are fighting for our peace of mind. This is war! Lord, help us. Read. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. The, the, the tongue of the who? The tongue of the wise. The wisdom of the sister is supposed to be out of the scriptures. Wisdom is coming out of the scriptures, sister. If you are following, if you if you seek that that Sirach twenty six or Proverbs thirty one, right? They, 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 no, I'm, I'm saying as far as them lining up, they they line up. Y'all sisters, the Titus two meetings, 
you watch them you, or you have it on, you're not really watching them. It's just on. You probably muted it. Probably got TikTok playing in the background. Damn. Instagram playing in the background. But you're not listening to Titus 2. You're not listening. Know how we know you're not listening? Because you're doing exactly the same thing that class is telling you not to do. Come on, man. That's how we know you're not listening. Those classes are put there in order to help build you up. Because you didn't have that growing up. You didn't have that mother telling you how to be a real wife, how to be a real woman. You didn't have that. So now you have those platforms and you don't use them. Like I said, you might have it on, but you damn sure ain't listening to it. That's for sure. That's for sure. I, I can, I can, I promise you that. Read. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. Read. But the mouth of fools. Of who? Of fools. Of who? Of fools. Read. Poureth out foolishness. Read. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Jesus is watching you. Jesus is watching you. Some of you sisters with your personal relationships with the Most High God, how do you think he feel about you with your personal relationship? How do you think that's working out for you? When your, when your life is, is complete chaos, everything is going bad for you. Who do you think is stirring that, that trouble up for you? Who do you think is tightening that grip around your neck? That's the Lord, sister. When your health is all bad, I don't know why I can't get a break. I don't know why it's so hard for me. Maybe if you consider yourself and consider how you're dealing with your Lord, you might get better. You might get better, sister. If you consider how your house is complete chaos, your kids are damn monsters. Maybe if you kept God's commandments, it might get better for you. What a novel notion. You don't have to live the way they told you you have to live. You understand? You have been given this 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 avenue to to navigate and it's going nowhere for you. You are on the road to nowhere. Read on. Wait, wait, wait hold on, hold on. I want that video. Uh, I said could you post the the videos so I can see which one I'm looking at. Uh, the last one, the last one I sent you, the last two that I sent you. I want to, I want to play those real quick. You got it? All praises. I didn't give you any music. I promise you I didn't. All right, don't make me take it back. Because I will. Come on with it, man. Hit me. Yeah, there we I go. Believe, uh, I believe she's cheating on me, for one. She don't come home. By the time you get home, you're drunk. You smell like smoke. You smell like liquor. Very legitimate concerns on his part. Does he have anything to fear in, in regards to you cheating on him? Yes, Your Honor. I don't know what she's doing. See what I'm saying? She said yes. I don't know what she's doing. Are she could you? be with man or woman. It Are don't matter. you? Yes, Your Honor. Did you know? No, I didn't know. I could do this. Who are you cheating on him with? I could do this. Mm. Is it is it a motorcycle club yes. member? Yes, Your Honor. Explain that to me. He fell off. He stopped bringing the flowers. He stopped making the dinners. Everything started cutting back. What you stop doing? Let me ask you this, Mr. Colley. Do you understand that courting is courting and flowers and all that kind of stuff? That's what happens in the beginning. But you, as the relationship progresses, that stuff drops off. But a sense of commitment and love and desire to fulfill more important needs get fed as opposed to showing up with some tools. Yeah? Mr. Baker, you are a good man. You have to understand, understand. That, that sister right there, somebody get her two... Get her two uh, flyers. That sister, she be giving it to y'all. Damn. She be giving it to y'all. And you, it's rare that you'll find a sister that will judge another sister correctly. Oftentimes, 
you find a way to justify your ways by the actions of others. You, does that make sense to you? You look at a matter, it was like, well, what about him? Well, we're not talking about him. We're talking about you. We're talking you. about you. And the sister says, well, I don't see all the stuff that she's doing bad. Well, what, what did he do to, to make her do that? We're not talking about him. We're talking about you. Fix you. You. You worried about the wrong thing. You worried about how to fix other people when your life is horrible. Fix you first. Don't worry about everybody else. This this path that we walking on is only is only wide enough for one person anyway. You worried about everybody else around you, but you ain't worried about you. Well, what about him? What is he doing? What about you? Stop it. Get some help. Stop the cap. And you know what it what the sister said, that goes back to what we read. Go back to Hebrews 13 and 5. That goes back to being discontent, discontentment. So you project your discontentment on your husband, and now he becomes the reason why you step out, why you commit adultery, why you destroy your entire house. Go back to that. Read that. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. And you see what happens? When sisters are discontent with the chief things that they have, with the things that they have in order to, to, to fulfill their lives, they start, they step out, and then they start to point the finger and say, well, it's your fault I stepped out. Right, it's your what fault. What the hell? How did we get here? How we get here? Last time I checked, I'm, I'm, I'm going to work. Right. I'm doing what I need to do to support the house. You got a roof over your head. What the hell? Hey, matter of fact, that, that first picture you uh, with the text message, put that back up. That first picture, the text message, that first picture. Now that makes more sense. Mm -hmm. Now that makes more sense. Come on, man. So you dealing with some some other Jew or some other guy, and you're saying that I'm going to start an argument to break the peace in the house so you can justify your dirty works. So you can justify your filth. Some of you sisters actually do that. You might not do it with, with you could drop that. Some of you might not do it with just, I mean, just dealing with a guy. But you'll cause an issue just so you can be justified in doing your dirty work. The, 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 uh, the Friday sickness, so you don't have to go to Sabbath class. I don't feel good. Really? You've been, you've been on the phone all day. Seem fine to me. You, you've been social media all, all day. You've been doing your thing all week, sister. Now you sick. Our people, are, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. See, I saved you, sisters. I say I jumped out there for you, sisters. I did that. You, you, you was, they, they was about to get you. They was about to get you, sisters. Give me Ephesians uh, 4. It was about to get you. Lord, help us. Verse 1. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Come on. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Forbearing one another. We are going to have issues. Not saying it's going to be a perfect wall. Nobody ever said that. Nobody ever said that. But in our walk, in our travel, we have to walk it together. Forbearing one another. Can, can, can we get that definition? 400? Forbearing. Starts with F. Forbear. Uh, no forbear. definition. Oh. Can we have a definition? I, I, I even told him how it started. F O R B 
B E A R. I got to drop the E in the middle. Come on, man. Come on, man. Forbear. Politely or patiently restrain an impulse to do something. Refrain. Oh, man. Now read that again with that with that understanding. Forbear. Politely or patiently. No, I meant the scripture, brother. I meant the scripture. Yes, sir. Lord, help us. This is the book of Ephesians chapter 4 and two. verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. The, the real, the real word in that, and and this is my understanding of it, is discipline. Forbearance is discipline. If you had that discipline in how we deal with each other, and because so, we're going to suffer together, we're going to suffer together. This 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 captivity that we in is for us to suffer. To bring us back to the Most High God, I don't know. Maybe, you, maybe you don't know that. Maybe you thought you came here for rainbows and lollipops, but it's not that. We were sent here in order for us to repent. The sword that's over our head is the enemy that the Most High put over us to bring us back to Him. You understand that? But what what kind of world do we live in where we have the enemy that's over our head, and then it's the enemy that's that's landing right next to you? What kind of world do we live in? Damn. Sad state of affairs. Read. Endeavoring to keep the unity. That means that we have to fight for our unity. It's not going to be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. We're going to fight. We have to make sure that our vocation, uh, we are worthy of it. You understand? Read. Endeavoring to keep the unity Come on. of the spirit. In the bond of peace. In the bond of peace. Come on, Cap. So you know what that's saying, Cap? Read that again, verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So that endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, that endeavoring, in order for you to endeavor, that means you got to fight with everything in you. Fight to keep the peace mm. as much as Energy as you put into arguing, as much energy as you put into thinking about what I don't got, make the happiness. Make yeah. peace within your house. Well, he's not bringing me flowers. Well, let me let me get him some flowers. Let me, let, me, let me do something for him so I can see the joy in his face. But we got Disney. We got Cinderella. We got mm. where, where you... It's, it's always we are so bowing down you. to your feet and it's all about you. No, we got the entire world against us from work. By the time we get off work, we got videos to edit. Then we got to go to camp. Then we got the fly mission. Then a sister to knock the, uh, uh, a damn wash pot to knock the phone out my hand at camp. Obviously, man. That, that was a karate chop. Yeah. yeah. So we, we going through all of this as opposed to endeavoring to force your will in the house, voice your discontent, you endeavor to keep the peace. Force that unity. Force that peace. For our family's sake. Yes. For our family's sake. We're, raise, we're, we're trying to raise up a nation. We're trying to raise up a nation, and you are fighting the person that you need to start a nation with. You understand? You you understand how we hustling backwards? The person that you're supposed to be with in order for this nation to be established, you're fighting him. Sisters, y'all have to get yourself together. Y'all have to fight. This says to you have to endeavor, endeavor to keep the unity. Read four. Verse four. There is one body and one spirit. Even as ye are called, in hope of your calling. So one body, one body, is one head of the house, one. There's not two heads of anything that's not a monster. You understand? There's not two heads of anything, 
anything. Yeah, matter of fact, get that Corinthians 11. Because some sisters got it upside down. We did a podcast, and the sister didn't know that. She she probably have never heard that before. She she came with the Trinity Doctrine, and, and Deacon hit it in the head. This, Read. This is the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 3. Come on with it. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is is the man is who is the man read it again maybe you missed a, you missed you missed something in there but i would have you know that the head of every man is christ right and the head of the woman is the man is the man sisters not you it's not the other way around give me that picture that, that, that one right there put that up yeah take the scripture down there you go this is what the Most High wants for you on the left. And this is what Satan wants for you on the right. White Jesus it was the one that gave you that you're, you're bad and you can live by yourself. Or, or what was uh, Power Bottom Jake say? Uh, thou art loosed. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Thou art loosed. From who? Who are you loosed from? We came here together. We gonna leave together. You are not independent of anything. Of anything. If anything, you you should want to be in subjection. You should want to have somebody over you to protect you. To make sure that you are covered. Some of you sisters are out here in the rain by yourself. You are gonna die by yourself. Damn. Kevin Samuels built the whole platform on crazy sisters. And all the people that built the platform because of him. Just because of how you move. The whole world has built industries because of you. Damn. The damn mop, eyelashes, the stupid hair, all of that wow. stuff. For what? To do what? To impress who? Not your man? Hell no. You, 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 you're emulating their transvestites. That's who gave you that image. Transvestites gave you that image. If you don't believe me, look it up. That's who you. That's who you're emulating. Ain't no real man ever told you, yeah, I need you to look like an ant. Nobody. Nobody ever said we want you to wear a damn a hair helmet. Nobody. That's your thoughts. That's your Come mind, on, sister. Man. Two pounds of makeup on your face. It take you two hours to get dressed. For what? And then when your husband say, you don't need all that, you start kicking against him. You kick against him because in your mind, I have an image that I have to portray. I have to look a certain way. It's funny how all these little sisters got that same stupid image with the damn things around their face. They're yeah. like a damn, they're like a picture frame. What is that? What is that? What is the, the damn hair that's, that's painted around the side of their face? Huh? That looks insane to me. Matter of fact, find one of those pictures, man. All you got to do is find a teenager, and, it, and, and all of them look exactly the same. Get, get, where, where is that at? The, the picture frame around their face. It ain't yet. Yeah, that's one. Everybody has the same look. Everybody looks the same because it's an image that they gave you and all of you are emulating that. That's crazy to me. That is crazy. And you spend your, 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 your house will be eating ramen noodles for the next two weeks because you spend all the damn rent money and damn hair Stop and makeup. There you go. There's another one. I promise you they all look the same. They all look the same. Google it and then hit images and scroll down. They all look the same. Who gave you that image? Your enemy. Your enemy did it. Look, it ain't hard to find. They all look the same, sister. You're abusing toothbrushes. Damn. <laughs> it's not what toothbrushes are made for, sister. Get your Bruh. life right, sister. Go back. 
give me uh, Genesis two and twenty one. Let's go to the let's go to the beginning. Y'all sisters ain't right. You ain't right. Damn. This is the book of Genesis, chapter two and verse twenty one. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, uh-huh. and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord, Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. So I don't know, un, uh, I guess uh, popular belief is that they're saying that the, the woman created life. No, the Lord created life. From man. From man. That's what woman means. From man. Get it through your thick skull and your hair helmet. That's right. You are from man. Don't get it twisted, sister. Life is put in you. Mm -mm. Read. And Adam said, this is bone of my bones. What did Adam say? This is now bone of my bones. You are part of me, sister. You are now part of me. Read. And flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Does your Bible say boss B? Because she was taken out of man. She was called what? Woman. Because you were made from man. Don't get it twisted, sister. Life did not start with you. The most high created man first. He ordained man to be over you in order to protect you, in order to raise a family. It has to be that order. It That's can't be right. any other order. It can't be. Go back uh, to where we were at, because I got a couple of videos. You know, say I'm, I don't want to lose time, because we have a lot of stuff I want to cover. Give me that. Give me one. We, I can't see the videos. Give me the second to last one I gave you, because if you played the last one, give, give me the second to last one. It would be great if I can see what you're looking at. Yeah, I, I get it. I understand. I understand. It's all right. Pray for me as I pray for you. Start it over, unmuted. You have stayed in here with me for a half an hour. And, and I pride myself on my ability to find something to like, enjoy, or respect about somebody. So far, I've come up with nothing. You have come in here, run your mouth, behaved ugly, said things like, keep it real when I mean, and I do mean you are not real, well, you, are, you are rude, the truth. you say take it or leave it, I'm controlling, let, let me tell you something, from here on in, people will be leaving it, because there's nothing good for them to take, well, there is nothing wrong with being a fool, but there is something wrong with staying one. And people stay foolish because they can't listen and they can't learn. You have lost a good man. Learn something from this. Well, that you cannot be a trifling, no count somebody, try to run somebody else's life, try to tell him what to do, be all up in his business, and then start hooping and hollering about you not a man. If he's not a man, that's because you chopped him up into little pieces and spread him out all over the house so he can't even pull himself together. Well, pull yourself busy. together, Mrs. Fleming. Good for you. Well, Mrs. Hey, listen. That judge right there? Was it Tolliver? Judge Lynn? Hey, sister, if you if you watching class this morning, you in the spirit. You in the spirit, sister. I, I pray you put on a dress and get your friends together. You know what I'm saying? Because you need to come on in here, sister. Stop playing. You know what I'm saying? Because you be breaking these sisters down. And they, and I know they, they it, it's, it's crazy because it's another black woman showing you the way. And and I guarantee you, if you go in the comments, if you was to read the comments of how, how sisters deflect, because your deflection game is, is on point. Your deflection game is on point. If you read the comments of how you don't want to accept responsibility for your actions, it's insane. It's insanity. Any other nation, 
any other nation he had gave his laws to, they would have done it. He gave it to the most righteous people. He gave it to the strongest people. And you you hate it. You hate God's commandments. Damn. I'm talking about the sisters that's in the truth. Uh give me Genesis three and sixteen. No, no, three, uh, three and one. Sorry, three and one. This is the book of Genesis, chapter three and verse one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Come on. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. And uh, who said that? And the woman? And the woman said unto the serpent, That we may eat of we. the... We. She said, we. She said, we. The serpent wasn't dealing with Adam. He was dealing with the woman. She's already put in her mind that I'm going to include Adam in his dumbness. I'm going to bring this to my husband. We. Read. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Come on. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So Adam already taught her. The Lord didn't talk to her. The Lord taught to Adam. Adam told her, don't touch that tree. Don't deal with those doctrines. Stay away from that. Adam taught her that. Read. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. So here you go, sister. You take the philosophy over the devil over your own husband. You'll take the philosophy of an enemy over the man that's supposed to be have raised you from, from, from nothing. Come on, man. Found you in nothing and will leave you in nothing if you don't fix your life. If you don't fix your life. Give me the picture. Satan. Good old Satan. On earth now, that's his puppets. Those are the tools that Satan uses to control our people. These precious white people that you hold dear to your heart and cry for. And when you squeeze your eyes real tight, you see white Jesus in your head. The devil! These, this is the image that's in some of your head when y'all close your eyes. And I say that because when you go to work, you have no problem listening to him. You have no problem jumping to the beat of his drum. Esau tell you, hey, go get me a cup of coffee. Make sure it's two sugars, two creams. That's exactly what you get them. Your husband say, hey, sis, can I get a cup of cold water? Nigga, get it yourself. Like, sister, I'm so thirsty. I'm so thirsty. It's not, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, I get you a cup of water. And I know you're tired. I know you're thirsty. Let me get you a cup of water. It's not that. Oh, okay, I'll get you the, I'll get you the damn water if you insist. I do insist. I do. We have to look at why we do the things that we do, the psychology of how we got to where we got, and who puts those seeds of evil in your head? Who planted that there? Your enemy. Your enemy. The same way that the serpent is dealing with Eve in the beginning is the same way he deals with you sisters now. He plants those seeds of evil in your head, and it grows into this wicked tree. That the man that now decides that he wants to marry you has to cut it down. He has to deal with you and all the issues and the baggage that you come with. Instead of the sisters say, you know what? I need to reform my mind. And I need to follow my husband. He has to deal with X, Y, and Z because you're full of crazy. Read on. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Read. And ye shall be as gods. You shall be as what? As gods. Well, could, could you spell that for me? G-O-D-S. Adam was already a god. <laughs> Adam was already a god on earth. We are gods on earth. That's right. We are gods on earth. That's right. If you don't believe that, you are the same sister 
that Eve was. That same Eve spirit is in you. Message. We are already gods. You're fighting us, and we're fighting the devil. Friendly fire. Genesis 3 and 16. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Since you don't know how to shut your black lips, read it again. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. I will greatly multiply your sorrow. I'm going to make it hard for you, sister. Read. And thy conception. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children. It's going to hurt when you have kids. It, which means it didn't hurt when you were having children before. You see the problem? So now you have 13, 14, 16, 20, 30 hours of labor. And it hurts. It should hurt. You shouldn't get an epidural. Because God said it's going to hurt. You shouldn't get Tylenol 800s. Because it's supposed to hurt. This is your punishment for what you did and what you continue to do. He says, I'm going to greatly multiply your sorrow. Read. In sorrow shall thou bring forth children. Read. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. No, no, no. It says to white Jesus. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. Your desire should be to your husband. In all things, not some things. But you know what happened, Cap? Is no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Oh. It's, it's more in that thing. We don't, don't, don't cut me off, Cap. I'm on a roll, Cap. Read it. And he shall rule over thee. He shall do what? He shall rule over thee. Hey, brother, I need a little bit more bass in your voice now. And he. Shall rule over thee. Now you got to read like that forever. Damn it. You all right, Cap. You all right. He shall rule over you, sisters. Your desire is to be to your husband, sisters. If you don't believe that, you are in the wrong place and you are reading the wrong book. Pick you up one of them Nancy Drew books. Live your best life. Go to the club and die alone. I know it sounds harsh, but it's the reality of the world we live in. Some of you sisters that got the little dogs that that think that you can live by yourself and for yourself will die by yourself. You is a lonely life for you, sister. Because you don't believe God's commandments. You don't believe the words of this book. And because of it, you are going to suffer by yourself. It's not harsh, Cap. Because when you got, look look at what we just read, uh, just watch with Lynn. What is it? Judge Lynn. Our houses are destroyed. Our families are destroyed. uh, uh, Baby mamas, baby daddies. Holes and whoremongers all over the place. Our nation is destroyed. So what you're saying is not harsh mm. whatsoever. We, the to, Lord to, said worse. To, to, to them, it's to harsh. To them, it's harsh. Remember when, when, we, when we heard the Most High's voice, we said, we don't want to hear that. Yeah. You talk to us, Moses. You give us those smooth words. You, you get that message and bring it back to us. Well, we're bringing the message back to you right now, sister. We're telling you the same thing that Moses told us in the wilderness. If you don't believe it, you are going to die. Period. And we're not talking about the the, the, the physical death. We're talking about spiritually, you are going to die. He was 13. No, no, we already read that. Sirach, uh, 20, uh 12 and 8. Sirach 12 and 8. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 12, and verse 8. A friend cannot be known in prosperity, Mm. and an enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. So 
in our prosperity, when you're doing good, everybody's your friend. Everybody is your friend. When you start going through problems, when you lose your job, you have health issues, that's when your real friends step up. That's when your real friends step up, meaning your friend in your house, your wife, is supposed to step up, not step back. If you don't step up, guess who else will step up? The devil starts to step up. In your head, I'm pretty sure, oh, what you got there? Okay, okay, what else you got for me? That's it? Oh, man, listen, bro, you had me, you had me right there. Yeah, we had a, um, I, I, I'm, like I said, I wish I could see what you could see. I had a video for this. Come on. Hit me, brother. Yeah, yeah, it's my man right here on the right. I can see it. Yeah, that guy right there. The chubby guy. Black women left the black men for government assistance, baby. We, we are see. not. We are not leaving y'all. It's eighty percent of the voices is y'all, big dog. Because black women think that they just got a better option. Okay, you don't need the black man to pay your rent. Okay. Section A. You don't need the black man to eat food stuff. You don't need the black man to take care of that baby. Medicaid and Medicare. You don't even need the black man for cereal. We. So you have, goddamn, you have turned your back on Tyrone for Joe Byron. And the moment that you don't have Joe Byron's house clean when they come inspect it, they're going to kick your black ass out in the street. Tyrone just wanted you to look clean and shut up. But Joe Byron say, oh, well, we'll give you this house for $50 a month or whatever, and it's Section 8 or whatever, as long as you don't let Tyrone stay over here. Okay. See, that is, you don't see that agenda? I do see. I see. I, I believe in that agenda. And they say, black women, you don't need this man to stay and be a father to this kid. Child support. Black women, you don't need to stay and work it out with your husband. Alimony. They incentivize y'all to leave us. And a lot of women haven't woke up to the goddamn play. They've been messed the f out of us, bro. They turned us against each other, gave y'all the chicken, and y'all sold us out. Damn. Damn. Hey, give, give me the uh, Captain Amaziah sound bite. Damn. You ain't got it. Don't worry about it. Damn. There you go. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How was the serpent recreated in this scene? Housing, welfare, food stamps. I'm going to throw one in there, too. Abortion clinics. Because you've killed a whole nation of people so far. There's, there's countries that don't have as many people as you've killed. And all, all in the sake of what? Being promiscuous. Being out there. Being 304s. Is that what they say? 304s. 304. Why? For who? For what reason? When you start to ask yourself, how did we get to where we are? How did we lose our, our, our nationality? How did we lose all the things? You go back to us breaking God's commandments. We're still breaking God's commandments. We got here for breaking God's commandments, and you're still doing it. You've killed more life than you've brought forth. That's a heavy thing. That is a heavy thing. And they put the abortion clinics in your neighborhoods. Abortion clinics are not in their neighborhoods. They're in your neighborhood, so you can kill your kids. They handing out damn uh, contraceptives in in high schools to do what? They 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 post these uh, videos of sex scenes and cartoons for what? Is to keep you in that midst of sin, to keep you in that state of being over sexualized. Everything, the clothes that you wear, the images that you have now, is to keep you in that mind state. That the only way you can get a man is, 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 to, is to show your body and sell your body. That's a setup, bro, bro. 
We tell we tell sisters to be modest. We your sisters all have garments. A sister take the damn garment and, and bring it in. And make it tighter. For what? Because you have that three oh four mindset. You can't help yourself. You just can't help yourself. I know you got something to say on that cab. Come on. All right, give me that video. Hit me. Too. I was sitting on my step. This year, a white man came to my house and said, Hey, little boy, is your mother and father home? I said, No, my mother's home. He said, Can, can you speak to your mother? Back in the days, a man didn't go into your house unless the man was there. So my mother came out on the step. He said, I want to talk to you and your husband about something. And daddy came home, the man came to my house, and we came and sat on the steps. And so the man told my mother, If your husband don't come to the house and I stop coming to the house, she can get $15 a month. Some kind of welfare thing. A lot of the people took it up. I'm not surprised. Pretty soon the woman's out there cheating, the man is out there cheating. Because we lost, they, they broke up the male responsibility household. How is that possible? That's why we all welfare today. Every generation to generation, that's when welfare started. 1943, that's when the white man came to my mother's house and told my mother and father, if they separate, he don't live there no more, we can get $15 extra a week. We got the great-grandmother on welfare, the grandmother on welfare, the mother on welfare, the children on welfare, and the grandkids on welfare today. That's not true. It's the truth. She knows it. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. Because all these gifts, or what you think they're gifts, are not gifts. They're not gifts. They're not, not at all. Not even the least bit. The devil is not going to give you anything for free that you're not going to have to pay for later. Keep that in mind. Remember that part. Hey, Read it. Out. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7 and verse 7. Hit me. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, uh -huh. and a gift destroyeth the heart. A gift destroyeth the heart. What heart did he destroy when he gave you welfare? He destroyed your minds. He, he, he made it to where you don't want to fight for your family anymore. It's okay for you to get pregnant because you, you'll get an extra three to $400. It's okay for you to have different baby fathers because 17% is 17% on each man that you have a kid with. Damn. You have, you, you've turned being a baby mama into a full-time job. That is damn sad and pitiful. And our women are, are, are comfortable in that thing. You get married, you have to deal with three and four different baby fathers. You decide that you want to marry the sister. You have three or four different baby fathers that you have to manage as a husband. Could you imagine that? I got to have a damn group conference call in order for me to, to get my damn house in order. Damn. But yeah, you tell sisters, look, the, the, way, the way your marriage should work is if your children don't want to ab abide by that man's rules, he need to go live with his father. Tell you straight. If your children don't want, because it's that man's seed. If he doesn't want to abide by that man, that man to decide to marry you, if he does not want to abide by that man's rules, two things need to happen. Either you leave or that child leaves. Because you can't have chaos in the house. You understand that? And you men shouldn't tolerate it. You should not tolerate it. Your wife tell you, well, well, that's that's his son. You don't talk to him like that. Well, two things can happen, sister. Two things. And both of them is somebody leaving. You understand that? Yes, you men understand that? Yes, don't be damn soft over there now. And she back you in the corner and put a head wrap on your head. Hell no. You say that. You say that. Some of you men got spiritual head wraps on right now. That's for a different Damn. time and a different story. Give me Jeremiah 31 and 22. Read the scripture. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31 and verse 22. How long will thou go about, O backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath made a new, created a new thing in the earth. It's a new thing in the earth. Read. A woman shall come past a man. The, the whole world is upside down. The whole world. The woman now runs the house. Big mama runs the house. 
Damn. When the cop comes to the house, he's not looking for the man to deal with. The, the older man just said, he said, when a, we're back in the day, they couldn't come in your house if you wasn't home. Now when you come home, everybody's sitting on the couch waiting for you. Like, come on in. Have a seat. Come on in. We already discussed our plans, and they don't involve you. Bruh. We've already mapped out your whole life, and we ain't told you a word yet. Some of you men do not understand that the, the, the devil has already taken the minds of our sisters. It's our job to take it back. It's our job to take it back. If sisters don't want to get down, have a nice life. Have a nice life. Your, your peace should never be a bargaining chip. It shouldn't even be on the table. If somebody takes your peace, it's because you gave it to them. Remember I said that. Come on. Get that real quick in Sirach chapter 20, verse 29. So how did Esau turn this thing on its head with what we just watched? Watch this. This goes with the, uh, the precept cat pulled in Ecclesiastes 7. Read that. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 20 and verse 29. Presents yeah. and gifts blind the eyes of the wise. So we understood at one point in time that we were better together than we are apart. Most married, even throughout slavery, chattel slavery, right. we understood we were better together than apart. Read. And stop up his mouth. That he cannot reprove. But guess what? With the gifts, the presence, being nourished by the face of the serpent, with the welfare, the wick, the food stamps, free money. Who ain't going to take free money when you in captivity? Right. Who ain't going to take free food when you in captivity? It's bait. That's bait. And it <laughs> says it stops up his mouth that he cannot reprove. That's why sisters, most times the black woman, she's not going to stand up against what we watching right here. She not going to say, yo, you sisters is crazy. Monique tried to do it. What y'all do to her? Right. Black bald, eight bald. Th that's it. Q bald. <laughs> that's the destruction of a gift. That's the destruction of a present. And what, we try what we're doing through the spirit of the Lord is we're trying to give you the medicine. We're going to freaking force it down your freaking throat yeah. till you get a clue. The righteous ones, they're going to stick around. They're going to get a clue. And they're going to fix their marriage. They're going to fix their house. They're going to build it up. They're not going to pluck it down. The wicked ones, yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a door with a doorknob on it. If it hits you in the... Anyway, go ahead. Ho and hopefully there's no doorknob on the other side. Give me Sirach 12. The first cap. Verse 10. This is the book of Sirach chapter 12 and verse 10. Come on. Never! Trust thine enemy, for as like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Our enemies have put us against each other. They have put that strife between us. We have, we have now fought our way to the bottom. We fought our way to the bottom. We, we fought past all the other nations all the way to the bottom, and here we are at the bottom. But now, now that we're down here, we got to fight our way back up. We have to fight our way back up. And we're going to do it with you or without you, sisters. With or without you, sisters. That's right. Give me that video that you got. I appreciate you, officer. You, you see, I, I, that's my Jew. That's my Jew. If you want to take over a society, you have to get rid of the strong alpha male. It's common sense. If you get rid of the strong alpha male, then you can control the feminine more easily. So the trick was always to act like they were empowering women by disempowering men. That was always the trick. And we fell for it. We fell for the okie doke. You created this problem. Hopefully, hopefully, you hearing it from another woman, it is sinking a little bit. This is Jim Crow, Willie Lynch, 
all over again. In order for them to break us, they broke the women. They broke the men, and then they're continuing to break the women. Now we are so out of order. We are so out of order. You don't even know which way is up anymore. Damn. You don't even know which way is up anymore. We have been turned to and fro. Bounced like a damn ball. And it's so subtle, man. They they call it black girl magic, all this BS. They say, you could go get your career, girl. Go get your college, girl. So live your you, best life. Live your best life. All these, all these nice terms that they put on it. Meanwhile, those are terms of destruction. That's what said. Hey, well, well, Cap's talking. Find that that picture of the feminists of uh, what's her name? What, what's the who started the feminist movement? Uh, so, yeah, Gloria Stein, Steinem, Steinem, the hook nose monster. Bring her up. Yeah, and while y'all looking for that, so when we when we read back in Genesis three that your desire would be to your husband, they said no, 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 no. Your desire, your, your desire is gonna be to uh, what's that black college in Atlanta? Uh, is it Clark? Clark, Clark Atlanta is one of them. The, the, yeah, what the the women's college? That the college. That's where your desire is gonna be. Yeah, put put gotta, the put the monster on there. Put the monster up. There you go. There's your master. Cause they matter of fact, and then find the picture of them modern day. Cause they took cause they recreated that same picture just to show you that they're still in the pocket of Esau. So remember this picture. Remember this picture. She is the mother of the creation of uh the feminist movement. And it's Spellman College for the women. Spellman? Yep, Spellman. It's it's a lot of colleges. It could have went either way. There you go. Bruh. There you go. Still strong. Still united with the enemy. Still united. And some of you sisters don't even know where the dumb stuff came from. You don't even know where it came from. To be bad by yourself. This is the this is the image. She said that you don't need a man. They was there, they was there to destroy the nuclear family. The same thing Black Lives Matter is talking about. That was their mission statement. They took it down since then because we, we started bringing it out. Like your damn mission statement says that in order for us to have a Black Lives Matter movement, we have to destroy the black family. What kind of damn sense do that make? How does Black Lives Matter when you just try to destroy the black life? You damn monsters, you. This boy said lesbians. Your goal is to destroy the black life. Two women together does not bring forth life. And for you effeminate men, two men don't bring forth life. You are working against God's order. God is about creating life. You are about destroying life. It's, a, it's impossible to believe that our people are this stupid. It's impossible. But you prove it all the time. Go back. Scripture. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Come on. Though he humble himself and go crouching, Yet take good heed. Take good heed. The heed is the warning that we're giving you now, sisters. Take good heed. We are warning you. Every single marriage class that's had come out since Bishop started teaching is about you taking heed about how marriage is supposed to be according to the Scripture. Not according to what your enemy says. Your enemy gives you vows that you say in your damn Christian church with Esau over your head. That you don't believe and don't vow and you don't keep. Read on. And beware of him and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass. Read. And thou shalt know that his rust had not 
been altogether wiped away. So he's going to show himself. The enemy is not going to be too far away from what he told you. When it, when the smoke clears, he's still there. After he destroys your marriage, your enemy is still there. While you're on in in the court trying to get 17% of your of, of your baby father's money, your enemy is there. Damn. He's the one that's giving the judgment. You're in the rears. All of that foolishness that's involved in child support. It was a sister. Uh, did, you got any of those? Um, did, did it have another video about that? Or didn't? That was it? Okay. So we we on we on cruise control. You know what I'm saying? No, no cruise control now. We, we we got the wheel. Read. Set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. He will stand up in your place, meaning your marriage is destroyed. All our marriages are destroyed now. Read. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, uh -huh. lest he seek to take thy seat. If, if the, 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 the gay marriage and all the other politics that come along with it, that's, yeah. what, takes that, that's what takes your place. That's what ta has taken your seat. You not believing in a righteous marriage anymore. That's what takes your seat. Our, our women having the damn having kids out of out of marriage. That's what took your seat. Now you don't have a strong home anymore. Our homes are broken. Our young women don't have good examples. You have to become that good example again, sisters. You take heed to the warnings. Take heed to what we're saying out of the scriptures, the words of the Most High God. Read. And thou, at the last, remember my words. Read. And be pricked therewith. Get your mind right, sister. Read. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent? So who pities you when you've done all these evil things? Who's, what, 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 what other nation? Uh, you followed Esau. You followed the, the white woman. When do they pity you? When do they say, yeah, well, you, you're fine? You can continue doing what you're doing. They encourage you in the evil. They don't say, no, you need to go back to your husbands. They don't say, no, you need to go back and build your families up. They've destroyed you, and they continue to destroy you. They continue. The, the, the advertisement business is a multi-billion-dollar industry. On what? Who's the, who's the biggest consumer? You are. You are. You are the biggest consumer of what they're selling. And what they're selling is evil. And you buy it. You Damn. buy all in. You are all in. I should have had that music queued up. Don't worry about it. Read. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come nigh wild beasts? Read. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him and his sins. Read. Who will pity? For a while he will abide with thee. But if thou begin to fall, he will not tear thee. They're not waiting for you. They, they're, they're not, they don't have your back. They're watching you fall to the bottom. You are tumbling. And they just take a step to the side and let you continue to tumble down. All the other nations, Moab, the Chinese woman, don't, they don't follow you. They don't follow you. The Arab women don't follow you. No other nation follows you, sisters. You don't get that. You're the salt of the earth, and nobody else believes you. We're the only ones trying to encourage you and get you right. If they would have it, they continue to blow you up and tell you, well, you're the most educated. You're the most qualified for these jobs. And they put you in this position. The world is upside down, sisters. You're the most educated queen mother goddess. You're the queen of the earth. But then when you look at the status of our people, does it really look like that you're the queen of this earth? When you look yeah, at the status nah. of your house, do you look like the queen of this earth? Get a clue, sister. This is a trick bag that they got you in. Go back. Read. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. It, the, the sweetness of his lips is welfare. It's child support. That's what he speaks to you with. 
He speaks to you through your covetousness. What do you really want? Do you want a happy life or do you want the money that comes with the destruction of your families and the destruction of your homes? Because huh? they'll give you money. Money is printed every day. It's only worth what Esau tells you it's worth. So what are you really chasing? You chasing Satan. You're still following Satan. The same way your foremother did is the same way you're still doing it. Eve chased Satan. That's why you're the weaker vessel. He did not come to Adam with that. He came to you with it. And we're still suffering because of it. Read on. But in his heart, he imagined how to throw thee into, into a pit. Read. He will weep with his eyes. But if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. Read. If, thou, if adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. That's exactly where Esau is at. Wherever you the lowest, that's where he'll be there waiting for you. You're at the bottom. He's down there waiting for you. You understand that? All the things that he's done to destroy our families, put the men in, in jails, they poisoned our food, the, the, the children are off. All the things that he has done to make sure that our family structure has been destroyed, he has done it. He has done it. We are an experiment that was great. Great. Bishop said the Negro was created in the, in the damn uh in a laboratory. That has to be the truth because it doesn't make sense any other way. You can see your destruction and you okay with it. It doesn't make any sense any other way. You can see the misery in your people's face. You twerking while your, while your damn kids are being destroyed. Damn. You on TikTok and your kids are watching all kind of evil. They being touched by them, the, the, the wicked uncles and all of that. You're home when it's happening. It's evil, sisters. You have to stand firm for the Lord, sisters. You are destroying your nation. You are. Read on. And though he pretend to help thee, Yet he will undermine thee. He has pulled the rug, the rug from underneath your feet, sisters. For the sake of time, give me Psalms 133. You about to run out of time. You ain't even say nothing to me, Cap. Lord, help me. <laughs> Cap watching me run. Come on, Cap. Come on, Cap. I just so, I just so happened to look up. Good Lord. Read it. This is the book. Of Psalms chapter 1 and ver 133 and, and one. verse 1. Read. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. That means, that means us, sisters. That's, uh, even though it's in a masculine form, it's talking about us too. It's a, it's a beautiful thing for a family to be together. It's a beautiful thing for our marriage to work. It's a beautiful thing. Read on. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. Read. That ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Jump down to 25 and 1. Sirach, 25 and 1. I'm about to run out of time. I had... This is the book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 1. Read. Read In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful before God and men. Read. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. Three things that the Most High said is beautiful to him, and the last one is a man and a wife that agrees together. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing in the eyes of the Lord. Jump down to 25 and 12. Verse 12. The fear of the Lord is as the beginning of his love. And faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. We have to believe that. Read. Give me any plague but the plague of the heart, and any wickedness but the wickedness of a woman. Keep reading. And any affliction but the affliction from them that hate me, and any revenge but the revenge of enemies. 
There is no head above the head of a serpent, and there is no wrath above the wrath of an enemy. Where you at? Verse 16. Read. I had rather to dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. So it's, it's that important for us to get our house back together. It said it was more, it was better for him to, dw to dwell with a lion and a damn dragon to be in a house than with a, with a wicked woman. Sisters, get your life together. We need you to get back to what you were supposed to be. You're supposed to be our help me. You're supposed to be a support system unto your lords. You understand that? Sisters, do you understand that? Sisters, do you understand that? All praises to the Lord, most high, Christ bless you.